Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are back working on the Audi V8 conversion on the Rockstar. All right, well, uh, for those of you who missed it last week, I was going through and uh, connecting up a new clutch and flywheel to the Audi engine and made it up with the factory box to gearbox. Uh, as I mentioned last week, I'm still waiting on a few bits and pieces. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the clutch came with uh, seven flywheel bolts, not eight. So I need to get a, uh, another flywheel bolt or another set of eight. Uh, and I also need a spacer, which was actually a factory part used on some of the 2.7 engines back in sort of the early 2000s. Um, that basically it's a, it's a spacer that goes between the bell housing and the block itself. It will space the uh, transmission back a little bit further, but there's enough movement there. It is going to make the uh, the gear shift um, cables a little bit to uh, another five mil or so further back. So again, uh, I need to make sure I've got enough length there, but I'm not too worried. Uh, the front cradle is solid, so it's going to be pushing the gearbox back, not the cradle forward. Uh, this is sol solidly mounted, the engine's not going anywhere. Uh, the other thing that with lots of comments about and um, trust me, I did think of it as well, uh, was about the intake. So this intake is on the back of the engine standard from Audi. And um, basically that intake, uh, I want to wrap it around and use the factory inlet, which is on the uh, Boxster. The side scoop is an inlet straight to the air filter. I want to try and utilize that because it's there. Um, I could, I did think about running this straight backwards into the boot space because again, this is going to be a race car, but uh, I'll show you why I am avoiding it. So at the moment, you can see this big structural beam here that uh, ties the whole back end of the car together. And that is where I'd have to cut through to get the filter into the back of the car. So it means doing a, uh, cutting out the, the structural component I may, I may do it, I may look at doing it and, and just putting a hole saw through and then putting a steel tube through into the back, but I don't want to weaken that structural point at this stage. If I can wrap it around and uh, put it through this side hole here, which goes out to the uh, to this side vent uh, and get the air going straight into the, uh, into the air filter from the side vent, that is not a bad thing, nice cold air in, inlet. We will see how it goes. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to uh, just take off this elbow. I've got a, a nice big Raceworks silicon elbow that I'm gonna put in here and cut it so I can tuck it in really close, use some of these factory elbows as well to help get it around the, uh, the edge and sort of get a nice tight tuck along this side so hopefully we can get it into the car. The next thing I want to tackle is, if those of you who remember when I bought this car, it honked like a goose. So that was the result of the PCV, which is this, uh, this thing here. Now I did buy a replacement, but it seems like it's actually not the correct part. Uh, it's a similar PCV, but it's not the same one. Um, but it looks like it's reasonably close to uh, similar sort of sizes. So I'm gonna see if I can make this work. Um, it just has to stop the thing honking. All right, it's not the right part. Uh, I couldn't send it back, so it's just easier to use it, and uh, that works fine. That's all connected up now. So the next thing I wanted to really do while I had the engine out is to go over all of the spare lines all around the place and work out what everything connects up to. And um, after some of the discoveries, I actually found that... Uh, I'm pretty sure my fuel in is it's a uh, it's a threaded uh, like stainless steel fitting looks like it's in the exact right spot to bolt straight up to the uh, Audi engine so I think that's probably another win um, looks like it's the same thread and everything and then I've got a bunch of these other sort of vacuum lines and stuff so um, this is for the carbon canister um, the the Boxes, carbon canister still in there, so I'll just run this to connect that up. Just makes it easier to connect it and uh, and keep it there. Um, I was looking at this thing, and in the Audi, it actually has an extra um, electric vacuum pump 
for the brake booster to give it extra uh, assistance besides just the vacuum off the engine. I'm not gonna bother with that. So these two lines here, uh, one goes to the booster, one goes to the vacuum pump, I believe. I'm just going to disconnect it, just have one going to the booster. So that makes that nice and simple. And um, the rest is mostly covered. So I sort of have worked out where all the bits and pieces go, everything I need to connect up. There's lots of wiring I haven't touched. Um, but uh, for the time being, uh, hopefully I can just get it all running as it is. But I think the next step is to actually trial this back into the uh, engine bay again without the gearbox on. I can put the gearbox on later and get everything else connected up in the car. And uh, then hopefully we should be able to um, say that the, the physical connections are done on the car and then it's just electrical. Fingers crossed. Right, that was a bit of messing around then trying to get this engine back in again uh, and I've discovered a couple of things. First thing, this um, intake system that I just made up, it's too tight sort of getting stuck in that position. The worst thing is that when I was trying to wrestle and put everything in then I pulled on the uh, harness a little bit more vigorously than I should and uh, yeah and I actually snapped this right out which is this is actually uh, plugged into here. This is the cam angle sensors. So basically when I was putting this in, I yanked on the harness a bit too hard and, uh, and snapped this off. This here, this is actually plugs into this hole right down here. So that is the cam angle sensor. And uh, yeah, we're gonna need that. Um, some of these plugs we don't need, not all the plugs on the engine. A lot of them are just uh, extra stuff. Um, that are not really necessary to make an engine run. This one, vital. So now I have to fix this before I can do anything else. It's little things like this that really make these jobs take so much longer than they need to. So um, I went through here and uh, I de-pinned this plug. I sort of extended the wire slightly and uh, soldered it all back together again, reconnected all the pins, uh, glued the clip back together again. So now I actually have a uh, what should be a working crank angle sensor again, or cam angle sensor I should say. I could probably source another one if I valued my time as money, but this is going to work. Uh, it's a, it should be fixed. It should be good. So uh, I can put this back on and get back to where I was um, an hour ago. All right. So I spent a bit of time then uh, rejigging the way I had this intake set up before. I've got my uh, airflow meter in now. Uh, this is all tucked in pretty tight into the back, uh, sort of wrapping around the back of the engine here. So hopefully that will work nicely. I've also rejigged some of the uh, the wiring and stuff like that. So it can sort of it flow around a bit nicer to where I want it to go. I'll probably have to do it again. I've sort of got to cut some of the sheathing off and make it all fit in the right spot. But at this stage, it's just getting things roughly in place. Let's trial fit it again and uh, see if I can actually squeeze it all in there this time. So a couple of things, I've got my engine in here now and you can actually see that the intake pipe has heaps of room 
at the uh, at the back here, but uh, in this corner here, that's where it's really interfering. And most of it is up above where I hammered that uh, little corner in. I need to really make a lot of clearance there to get this tucked right up high out of the way so it can actually get through around that corner. There's plenty of room in the corner. Uh, and so there's plenty of room at the back. It's just this, uh, this sort of top section up in here that I need to fix. I have also come to another realization. My subframe is an absolute pain in the backside to try and get in and out. Uh, the issue is, is that it's so tight because this corner here is on an angle sloping backwards. You have to sort of shoehorn it in to get it up in and into the space. And uh, so you can't have it bolted to the engine when you're putting it in. And even when you try, it's just, I'm trying to get the engine up high enough on block so that I can get the, uh, the rest of it up into place. And it's just not a good system. I am not happy with how I've put it all together. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull the engine out again. I need to make some more clearance for that uh, exhaust manifold or inlet manifold, I should say. And, uh, and I'm also, I think I'm gonna cut this uh, frame into two bits and make it uh, a bolt-on uh, two-piece subframe. So this cross brace, which is actually doing um, a lot of the, uh, a, a structural job at the moment, is going to stay as one piece going all the way across. But this, uh, this sort of front half is uh, going to bolt onto the rear half in two bits. I think that's the way to uh, get it all to work. And I've also got a, Modification I need to do to these engine mounts. So let's rip it all out and uh, like always, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing twice. All right, so um, the first thing I'm gonna tackle now is redoing the engine mounts. So I was lazily using these factory Audi engine mounts before and wondering what this plug was doing on the side of them. And apparently these are electronically controlled, so I think they can, must be able to increase or decrease the, uh, uh, the stiffness of the engine mounts depending on what you're doing. Anyway, I was lazily using these, but what I really should do is firm up the engine mounts so that the engine doesn't move too much. And I'm gonna do the same basic type of engine mounts that I did on the uh, Ferrari, um, which is using these. So this is uh, some leaf spring bushes out of a Mitsubishi Triton. I've actually got the part number here for any of those that are interested in uh, copying these things or using them or for me to reference again later on when I, uh, I need to get some more. Um, and uh, the, the good thing about these particular bushings is it's easy enough to get some off-the-shelf pipes that fit them nice and neatly, so they fit into the end of these uh, this pipe. So this is going to be the centre. These are basically called known as cotton reel mounts. Al at Skid Factory uses these exact bushings, so thank you, Al. Uh, the, these make really easy work to uh, to make some engine mount. And then I'm going to cut basically a U-bracket out of a big chunky bit of uh, square tube. Same as what I did on the Alfa Ferrari. Makes a nice big solid engine mount, nice and quick and easy to make. So let's start cutting and, uh, and fabricating engine mounts. All right, that is my engine mount. So I've done two of these cotton reel mounts now. The benefit of these style mounts is that even if the bushings completely go, the uh, the bolt, everything is captive. So it might rattle around a lot, but it's not going to come out and, uh, and break off. Whereas there are a lot of factory mounts that are just a rubber block. And if the rubber block breaks, the engine's just loose. So uh, these are a really good option. They're really simple to make. So there, there is my basic um, engine mounts, two of. But before I can actually mount these onto the engine and onto the engine cradle, I need to modify that cradle to make it easier to put in and out.
Okay, so everything is bolted back into place. This cross brace is now uh, its own piece and uh, I've disconnected the front half of the subframe so they're both separate pieces, which is the first step. The, uh, the next step now is to make somehow to have these two pieces bolt together. Um, I want them so that I can, like I said, I can mount the uh, engine on this part of the subframe. It can all go in with that and then I can sort of shoehorn this bit in afterwards bolt it in and it's all going to be pretty straightforward or well, that is the theory so now i need to make up my flanges to bolt these bits together Okay, so I've just spent a bit of time then making up a couple of brackets. Now, this is how I'm going to bolt everything together. So um, this one's still quite hot. Um, uh, I've welded a couple of captive nuts, got a couple of M10 bolts in there. So there's plenty of shear strength that, that's uh, gonna hold that there. And um, basically, the, uh, this angle portion is gonna be welded onto though the angled uh, side that I said was an issue. And then I'll have a nice 90 degree join and this angle iron will actually bolt onto the, the front portion of the subframe. It's gonna be much easier getting the whole thing in and out of the car. So let's start working on welding these into what I've got. Okay, so you can sort of see what I've done here. I've welded on uh, the angle piece onto the upright and this is now a two-piece subframe. The bolt's in nice and square here. Last thing I'm gonna do is gonna go through and reuse my gusses, just trim them up so that they sort of can fit into this place here. I'll use the same ones because they've already got the dimples in them. And um, yeah, we'll uh, button this thing up. Okay, well, subframe's built, so the next thing I need to do is put the engine back in, but before I do that, I have to make the clearance for that inlet manifold, so all this area here really needs to be um, finessed with a large hammer. <laughs> so let's make some space and uh, see if I can get that inlet to flow around that corner. All right, so the top of this engine still looks like a total mess, but we're getting there. Um, the inlet is basically in now. A couple of the tabs are still just touching. There's a little tiny bit more clearance I could do to make it fit better, but it's, it's almost, almost there. Everything is almost there, but uh, I'm running out of steam. Yeah, I'm getting pretty tired at this point. I think it's a good time to stop. I've been working for several days on this now, just trying to get everything right. And we're really, really close. Just trying to get everything fit in just right. I know I'm doing everything twice like I always do, but that's just the way it goes with these sort of things. I just want to get it right and get it serviceable and easy enough to use. The, uh, the subframe like it was before, it was just not working. Um, I have managed to get that inlet almost in place. There's a little bit more uh, trimming and modifying I need to do. That's easy. Um, yeah, I am, I am very happy with the progress. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna call it for today. So um, if you're enjoying this, do all the things, like, subscribe, uh, hit the bell, all that sort of stuff. Uh, if you wanna help us out, join us on Patreon uh, to watch the videos a day early, ad free. And if you need parts for any of your Porsches, including the uh, ugliest things around, uh, go to uh, PorschePartsByJeff.com and compare prices there first. All right, guys, see you next time.